Congressman Jim Banks of Indiana. He's also an Afghanistan veteran and member of the House Armed Services Committee and Democratic Congressman Brad Sherman of California. He is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and both were briefed on the Russian bounty intel at the White House. It's good to have you both. So good to be with you. this I I issue is out there. And regardless of who was briefed when, um, what now? And Congressman Banks, let me first go to you because now we know at least that there, is a th there are threads of intel out there, ne not necessarily verified. What more information do you need to have in order to decide whether Russia should be held to account for this? Unfortunately, Dana, I don't know that we'll ever get that information because at the moment Russia is shredding the evidence if it is, is, if it is at all true. And in the, at the end of the day, Russia is, is the winner on either side of the situation. If they put bounties on the heads of U.S. troops in Afghanistan, we might not ever know the facts about it so that we can hold them accountable. And if they didn't, they're succeeding once again at sowing discord in America today just prior to an election in 2020. And the New York Times is their partner in doing it. Uh, Congressman Sherman, I know that you had the briefing today as well. And in this um, speech that President, uh, Vice President Biden held, he said that um, President Trump uh, was guilty of a dereliction of duty over this issue. But as you just heard Kristen Fisher say, even DOD is saying that it wasn't it wasn't aware of this intel, it wasn't sure about it, is saying that there's a dereliction of duty just maybe going too far at this point. Look, we've known that Russia is helping the Taliban kill our troops. The salacious detail, the extra obscenity, is whether they're providing money per dead American soldier or whether they're just providing money in general. We have failed to sanction Russia because of their assistance to those who are killing our troops. We have failed to sanction Russia for interfering in our elections. And when we did impose sanctions, Congress passed them last year, to sanction Russia for killing uh, someone or try, uh, assassinating someone or trying to with chemical weapons in violation of the Chemical Weapons Treaty, the administration watered them down to the point where they're almost nothing. Now is the time to impose some sanctions. Putin needs to be sanctioned, not kissed. Congressman Banks, would you support additional sanctions against Putin? Well, uh, a absolutely. We should do more to uh, push back against Russia's malign activities in Afghanistan. But President Trump has done just that. He's been very tough on Russia, unlike the weak posture of the Biden-Obama administration that did so much to turn a blind eye to Russia's malign activities, especially in Ukraine, uh, but also elsewhere, where Russia's interests very much were misaligned with the United States. But let, let me be very clear. Jim, I served Jim, in Jim, Afghanistan. Jim, I served in Afghanistan during the time that these bounties were supposedly placed on the heads of our troops. And the fact that the New York Times, in partnership with a leaker, published details that makes it harder for our intelligence community to do, to do their job and get to the facts of this matter is despicable. Someone should be held accountable for it. And we have to look at this New York Times story for what it is. It's a hit piece on the president just prior to an election to rehash the Russian collusion hoax to try to damage President Trump, and it's nothing more. We have Brad not. Sherman, there are many people who feel that way, that the, that the president is being struck by um, sort of the empire strikes back within the government, and that when you have the Biden campaign just picking it up and running with it, and ads are, have already been cut, and we still don't have actual information, and, and, and it's not verified. Are you going to demand this, additional this information, report, maybe hearings, to get to the bottom this, of it? This report is important. Whether it's 99 percent true or 39 percent true, it should have been raised with the president. It wasn't. The people around him knew he didn't want to hear this. And so he's op offering a seat at the G8 to Putin while there's a, his administration knows there's a substantial likelihood or substantial possibility that there are bounties on the heads of our soldiers and at very minimum that he's giving money, that the Russia is giving money to the Taliban. When they had a chance to impose sanctions on Russian sovereign debt purchases, prevent them from getting the loans they want, they, they used a national security waiver and refused to sanction Russia. So he's obsequious to Putin. He's inviting him to the G8, which is the highest level of uh, diplomatic involvement a country can have. 
He's refusing to, uh, and using special waivers to avoid preventing them from borrowing money from American banks. All right. All why Jim says. So I'm going to have to he, 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 they, they're, be, they're killing our people in Afghanistan. That's not me, that's Jim. And let's be clear that there was, uh, and, and the invitation to Russia to join the G, I don't think that invitation has been formalized. I, I know that he did talk about the possibility, but I, I think that has not been something that's finalized. And of course, it will be up for discussion. Congressman, well, I thank I you both for now. being here this afternoon.